I'd like to start with this slide. I know the next few slides, everyone's probably seen them or some derivative of them, um, but it really highlights where lithium is being produced in the world, about half from Central or South America and the other half from Australia and China. Less than 2% is being produced in North America currently. So this is uh, obviously a huge opportunity for anyone looking for lithium in Canada and North America in general. Um, the lithium demand is surging. We know that now it's not uh, trying to convince anyone. It's, it's in our face. If you ever tried to order an EV, it takes a couple years to get it. Um, at the same time, you have Canada and US uh, policymakers uh, trying to secure a domestic supply chain of lithium. Uh, so, uh, you know, and that's not gonna come down. And, uh, and so with, the, with, the, with this, of course, you have a massive price explosion um, and we see, don't see these coming down until there's really a, a shrinkage in that supply demand curve. Um, and I think I heard this morning that the price of lithium hydroxide reached 80,000 tons. So these are massive opportunities here. There we go. So again, this is a popular slide. Uh, two sources of lithium, uh, pegmatite, brine, uh, pegmatite hard rock mines and shallow salar brines. These are traditional uh, long, uh, you know, they, they've been happening for years. Not a lot has changed over the years. There's been no need to change. Mining and technology doesn't advance unless there's a real need to. Uh, there needs to be a catalyst and we're certainly seeing that now. Uh, that catalyst being, you know, needing lithium now also, but needing lithium in an environmentally and socially responsible sourced way. Um, and the DLE uh, certainly fits, fits the box there. Um, smaller impact, less fresh water usage, um, and really the next generation of lithium mining. So with that in mind, Lithium Bank and our team, uh, we uh, put together a strategy, a resource strategy, um, and uh, went out with uh, geology as our main focus, uh, scouring Western Canada for the, the, the right parameters in certain reservoirs um, where you are able to host sizable, large, uh, potentially resource, uh, lithium rich resources. Um, and as well, the second important factor is the hydrogeology. You have to be able to deliver these brines to surface uh, for a long period of time at a large flow rate. So we went out and did that. Um, and uh, to date, we have 4 million acres of land, uh, mostly in Alberta, 3.7 million acres in Alberta and 300,000 acres in Saskatchewan with mineral leases. Um, and we've... Uh, and so in 2019, so can you go back one, please? Yeah, so uh, in 2019, um, we set out to do this. Uh, we raised some private money, um, and um, where is that? This button is very, not working very well. So we acquired 4 million acres and in 2019 we went out and did exploration and um, from those two, two years of exploration we narrowed it down and we have focus on two assets now in Alberta. Uh, our flagship being Boardwalk, it's 570,000 contiguous solid mineral permits. Um, it's uh, a Devonian aged carbonate reef complex from the Leduc formation. Um, it's a confined aquifer. Uh, it hosts 17 cubic kilometers of a lithium enriched brine. Uh, being a confined aquifer, uh, we see as a huge advantage. We don't have any interaction with uh, other formation waters. So over the course of the 50 kilometers of samples that we've, we've, we've seen taken in the Leduc, um, the chemistry is very consistent throughout the whole place. And so when we draw down water, we're not gonna have any interaction or dilution from other formations. Um, we're working on a PA on Boardwalk and I'll get to that in the next slide. Our other project of focus in Alberta is Park Place. Park Place is also a uh, Devonian age Leduc carbonate reef complex, also a confined aquifer. Um, it is 1.6 million acres. Uh, this project is further behind the, uh, the boardwalk property. Uh, it took us three years to consolidate all these mineral permits. It was kind of piecemeal with several different companies. Uh, but over the course, we've consolidated it and we're happy with our land position and we're working on that. Uh, and we've engaged Matrix Solutions, uh, who are very experienced in this, to do a hydrogeological study on this project as well. Um, and historically, uh, samples in this area have reported uh, 76 to 140 milligrams per liter. Uh, we're currently in the field taking samples from brines from uh, re-entering wells um, and operating wells to get brine samples for 
uh, validation and verification of the grades here, as well as uh, collecting enough water to do DLE testing. So our flagship boardwalk project, we've had a lot of news out recently, if you follow our story. Um, this news is really the foundations of any brine project and our, our key pillars to develop these projects. The hydrogeological model we put out in October, um, it shows uh, that our, our reservoir is capable of producing huge amounts of water over a long period of time consistently. Um, and so that's the deliverability of our brine uh, and we're unconstrained by that. So we, uh, from the, the study that is going to be tied into our PEA, it outlines a production zone you can see on the map. That's where the well network is located. Uh, it's capable, uh, and it's about 25% of the whole of Duke Reef. Um, and so there'll be multiple wells uh, with multiple pads with uh, multiple wells per pad. And um, each well is capable of over 3,000 cubes a day. So it's an immense amount of water. Uh, the second, of course, is the resource. You have to prove the lithium's in the ground. Uh, we just released a resource update. The first in Canada have an indicated resource. This brings a level of confidence um, a high level of confidence to our resource, uh, 393,000 tons of lithium carbonate equivalent at 71.6. So we've increased our grade from our initial resource by about 7%. And we've also increased our uh, grade for our indicated resource at 5.8 million tons. So a combined total of 6.2 million tons LCE. Um, so with the, inf with the indicated resource, it's there in orange on the map. Um, it's mostly covered because there's uh, over 400 historic production wells into the Leduc, so we have a mass amount of data into that formation. Um, of those 400 wells, 40 have been sampled for lithium um, that are part of the resource estimate, and four wells we re-entered last year um, and did a really extensive uh, uh, chemistry program and uh, ICP evaluation and really dug into the QAQC on analyzing brines and understanding them, and uh, we were able to validate those grades and increase those grades from that. And of course, the DLE, um, we uh, recently announced a, uh, our, our, uh, the initial study uh, is being completed uh, of, and receiving 93% recovery in under 60 minutes from our third party uh, proprietary ion exchange technology company. Um, it was a high purity, high concentration of uh, 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 lithium chloride at 60 times our initial brine chemistry. Uh, and this was this was an in-depth four-month study, so it wasn't just a, a one-and-done and, and anyone can really recover lithium in a lab. This was a four-month exhaustive study of, of testing all the different parameters, the pH, the, the temperature, uh, different amounts of, of uh, DLE material to be used. So uh, continuing on with that, there's uh, our we're going to continue to optimize that for the PEA, um, and optimization looks like it's somewhere between 2.5 to 4 milligrams uh, grams per liter as a concentrate. Um, uh, we are going to continue to optimize um, this uh, uh, testing um, for the PEA and beyond the PEA as we, as we look towards piloting and uh, feasibility level studies. There's always more optimization to do to find that sweet spot. We're certainly happy with what we have at this stage. So, Rough schematic, very simply put, brine come, uh, we'll be producing from the brine from multiple uh, wells per pad from the Leduc, which is in blue there, coming up through traditional oil and gas methods into the DLE. <laughs> into the DLE plant where we uh, remove uh, the lithium. There we go. And um, so uh, that takes uh, under 60 minutes. 93% um, recovery. Uh, the brine is then put back in the subsurface in different formations. We're looking at formations above and below the Duluduke uh, for various reasons. And uh, from that, the lithium is stripped from the ion exchange and then it is, continues to upgrade downstream to a battery grade product and the ion exchange is reused in the brine over and over and over again. So the second strategy we had to implement was a DLE strategy because we are a resource company. Um, so we engaged Hatch about 18 months ago to do a comparison study of different DLE technologies, uh, uh, starting in North America, but we looked beyond. Uh, we, we created a short list uh, with them of, of DLE technologies that are suitable for our specific brine and uh, began to uh, implement uh, test programs specific to each DLE. Uh, obviously, I've, I've reported and given you the numbers of one that we're very happy with the results with that we're using as the backstage of our PEA. Um, uh, but in true form with our strategy, uh, we're currently testing four additional technologies. 
um, and at various stages of that development. And um, it could mean uh, updating a PEA, but uh, these four technologies are hand selected as well. And we're very encouraging by these results as we go. And we should get those in the next couple of months. I've talked through this, so I'll skip this. And I'll talk through, uh, I guess Park Place, I've mentioned we're, we're doing our hydro study and, and we're really, this program's, this project's really gonna benefit from the work we've done at Boardwalk and progressing it through uh, to develop it. So we also have a portfolio in Saskatchewan. Uh, we have three assets in Saskatchewan, Estevan, South, which is adjacent to Prairie Lithium, uh, and uh, Kindersley. Uh, Kindersley, you just heard uh, Grounded Lithium talk. We're, we're, we're checkerboarded within uh, Grounded Lithium. They have, uh, from what I hear now today, they have twice as many checkers as we do, um, but obviously a very, very similar geology being in the exact same location. Uh, we've just completed a hydrogeological study there. Um, it is, uh, you know, I think we came up with uh, just under four cubic kilometers of brine. Um, we expect to have similar grades to what uh, Grounded has seen. Uh, so we're, we're excited to continue and progress that project as well. So the Western Canadian Advantage, it's a real thing. Um, both provinces, Alberta and Saskatchewan, are very supportive and very publicly supportive of the lithium industry. Um, uh, there's community support for this. Everyone's excited when they hear there's a second life to some of these oil fields. Uh, the Sturgeon Lake uh, oil field in our, in our boardwalk project is, is dormant, it's all shut in, there's no production, so seeing a second life there is, is uh, very encouraging to a lot of people. Um, there's an immense amount of infrastructure in Western Canada in the oil and gas. Uh, not all of it is, is repurposable, but there's certainly uh, opportunities to use a lot of that infrastructure uh, and advance these projects more quickly um, and, and bring down the costs on some of the capex. I wouldn't say there's an underutilized workforce, there's workforce is working hard. Uh, but they're certainly a talented workforce with their skills that can be transfer transferred into the lithium industry uh, fairly easily. Um, the the uh, regulatory framework um, in Saskatchewan is is already moved over to the to the oil and gas, but Alberta is in the process of moving the regulatory body uh, from minerals and mining towards the uh, AER, the Alberta Energy Regulators. This is a huge step forward uh, for the industry uh, as as it's a it's a very mature regulatory body. And uh, the development of lithium is going to be much the same as oil and gas. When you produce oil and gas, it's a lot of the time it's 98% water anyways, so you're pumping water. Uh, we expect good transparency and, and, and have some expectations when we see go through the permitting cycle in Alberta and Saskatchewan. So like I said, the, the, a massive geological data set really helps uh, speed up the resource development and, and keep costs quite low for, for developing these resources. There we go, thanks. Uh, so our, uh, our uh, development phases, um, we're, we're aggressive in trying to produce these projects. Um, uh, we're, we're hoping to get some results out on Boardwalk, uh, our PEA by the end of the year. It might leak into early next year. Uh, and we're looking to do resource estimates on our Kindersley and Park Place assets uh, in the first half and then follow up with the PEA on both those assets uh, using our blueprint that we I sent, essentially developed for uh, using Boardwalk. Uh, Sorry, this button is not easy. There we go, thank you. Um, so our comparables, uh, E3, Standard Lithium and Lake. Obviously, these companies are seeing a lot of success and we see the, their market cap, really a correlation with how they've advanced their projects and how they've de-risked them. The more advanced and de-risked you have it, their, their market caps are increasing. Um, so how we add shareholder value to lithium bank shareholders or future lithium bank shareholders This button is not working very well, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we have a very favorable share structure. We have 37 million shares outstanding, uh, 43 million fully diluted. Uh, we have $4 million in the bank, so we, we have the funding to, uh, to finish off our PEA, which is already 80% done, uh, continue on with our exploration programs and development programs on our other projects. Um, and uh, we really feel that um, 
as we de-risk our projects, our shareholders will benefit from our, uh, the same way our peers did in de-risking our assets and being re-rated in that regard. <laughs> uh, our, our Lithium Bank team, um, uh, I don't know if you, anyone's known Paul Matissic and, and Rob or, or Gianni, they're, um, our, our, our board and our management team are all very engaged. We don't have a sleepy board. Everyone's very engaged in the project. Um, uh, the, the directors and insiders own 40% of the shares. It's a massively, it's a very tightly held uh, table. Uh, in the beginning in 2019, it was all our personal money putting in, staking these claims, putting in our time for free uh, to, to develop our, our initial resources and portfolio. Um, and each individual, and I encourage everyone to look, at the, look us up, um, have all been very successful in our specific fields of expertise. Um, so it's a really positive team we have. Get through everyone, there we go. <laughs> I guess in summary, uh, Lithium Bank has really set ourselves apart to be in a unique position to have several um, uh, um, brine projects that we're de-risking to a PEA level, as well as being in a, a very safe jurisdiction and uh, having multiple DLE technologies at our fingertips that we can compare against each other and, and PEAs that are you know, post-inflation, real world economics as they are now. Um, with different DLEs, we can slot in and out and compare and, and even combine them as we go forward and really make attractive proper projects. So with that, um, that's 15. <laughs> Thank you.